Hi everybody. It's uh, that time again. Going to uh, summarize uh, another uh, literary text. Last week we did an Akkadian text, uh, The Poor Man of Nippur, which is one of my favorites. And this week do something not more serious, but uh, do a nice Sumerian text that's kind of meaty. Um, Enki in the World Order. So um, one of the uh, the creation texts um, that really is an organization and an assigning of tasks uh, or of roles. Uh, it's common engineer's term motif. So Enki is the um, you know the one that's doing the assigning, and uh, it's it's a really interesting text. So I just got my notes here, and let's kind of go through it. So there are. Um, different sections, particularly in the beginning, that seem maybe to the reader to drag a little bit. This is a praise of Enki, um, so it's you know it's designed that way. So there's a, a section of praise to Enki, and then Enki praises himself. Then the Anuna gods praise him, and then he praises himself again. And uh, then there's this fascinating little section. It occurs twice in the text. We can talk about it maybe in another video, but it says that he presented animals and other things to the Martu nomads, which is uh, it's just interesting. It's plugged in there. Anyway, I have to deal with that. So then the Anuna gods praise him again. Uh, then there's a short section where the uh, the people of Sumer purify parts of Eridu for Enki. And then the meaty part of the text comes up. So you know, you've got all this praise that sort of starts in the beginning, which makes sense for the text. But then the part that most people are uh, more interested in is this decreeing of fates um, in general for different parts of the ancient Near East um, and then um, assigning of tasks to the various deities and then of course at the end if you know the text at all um, Inanna comes back and says hey what the dizzle um, you know you didn't assign me any cool thing what's what's going on and so the interaction there is um, shows up in a lot of the literature so let, let's go through it so Enki decrees fates for Sumer, then he moves to Or, city of Or, and then he jumps to the Indus Valley, to Malucha, and decrees fates there, and then he moves to Dilmun, so, um, you know, south along the uh, western edge of um, the Persian Gulf. So interesting that, you know, um, the areas that are that are chosen there in the text to have uh, fates decreed um, and just as a side note I suppose so that it's clear decreeing something's fate is sort of like calling it out um, and saying this is what you're going to do um, it, it's not a blessing I don't suppose um, as much as you know when a god decrees your fate it's like what's gonna happen it's determining what's gonna happen um, so these are you know, these are good things for these areas. So, <clears throat> when he gets back, he fills the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers with his semen, which sounds kind of weird, and the text is pretty graphic. But, um, these rivers were considered the life of the land, and uh, they brought forth abundance for the people. And because Enki is seen as the source of plenty and abundance, um, and his semen, as you see in other stories, is incredibly potent, um, this sort of thing <laughs> makes good sense. Um, so he creates the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. And then he assigns the positions of the deities over the various areas. So again, he's the reason it's called Enki in the world order is that's what he's doing. He's sort of organizing everything. So, uh, so a, a deity is in charge of this thing that he organizes. So to kind of go down through the list... Enbilulu is put uh, over the Tigris and the Euphrates because he's just created them. Nanshe is placed over the sea. Uh, Ishkor over the clouds and the rain. He's the storm god. Enkimdu is over plows and yokes. Azina is over the cultivated fields. Kula over the building of bricks, of mud bricks. Uh, Mushtama over the building of foundations of temples. Shakan over the animals of the plain. Demuzi Ushumgalana, so Demuzi Ushumgalana is a name that shows up for him in a lot of the lament texts. He's one of my favorites, obviously. Um, he's placed over the cattle pen and the sheepfold. Utu, the sun god, over heaven and earth, just sort of in general.
Okay, sorry about that. Um, I don't know what happened. I recorded the whole thing and then went back to play it and uh, the video messed up. So, anyhow, this is what happens when you leave me alone with the recording equipment. So, uh, we finished talking about um, the assignments of the deities. Well, this is when Inanna comes to uh, Enki and says, Hey, you know, you didn't assign me anything cool. What, what's my role? How come you didn't? Uh, how, how come you've treated me this way? And she says that Nintor, uh, the goddess, has been made a midwife over the land. That Ninissida is the mistress of heaven. Um, she cites a few more. Um, Ninmug is the, a metal worker. Nisaba is the scribe. Nanshe is over the fisheries. But what about me? You know, why have you treated me this way? And Enki's response is, Look, I've given you pleasant speech. I've given you um, garments of power, which seems kind of weird, but this sort of thing shows up in other texts that we'll talk about later. Um, you know, power in battle was a big thing that she was given to speak good omens or bad omens. Um, and he says, I made you tangle straight threads, and I made you straight and tangled threads. This sort of uh, there's sort of a dichotomy, a tension in Inanna that you're going to see in Inanna Ishtar, that um, you know, goddess of love and war. She's she's sort of pulling in and of her, in, in and of herself. She pulls against seemingly who she is um, because she does one thing and then does the opposite, and it's and and he continues and he says, "You heap up human heads like piles of dust. You know, you destroy what shouldn't be destroyed. You create what shouldn't be created. Um, in other words, you're reckless." Uh, he he uh, he talks to uh, he tells her that um, she stops lamentation rituals from taking place by either uh, taking the uh, by putting the um, instruments that are used in these lamentational rituals. Um, out of commission or hiding them, uh, but you know, so that the gods themselves can't be um, appeased, they can't be um, calmed down. It's a big deal. And uh, then he accuses her of, you know, being, um, you know, not being able to get enough of people admiring her, you know, which is something that we see in the Gilgamesh epic, for example. And then the text ends with, uh, and there's a small broken section, but essentially it ends there and says, "Praise be to, to Father Enki." And so. Um, what we see there is that you know he he Enki goes through and assigns the world order, sets everything in place. Uh, Inanna comes to him in what we consider to be or what we would expect this sort of rash, um, um, I don't know, maybe biting style. I'm not sure that I would necessarily call it that, but at any rate, she comes and she says, "Hey, you know, what about me?" And uh, he, he accuses her of being reckless, but says, I, I, I have assigned you these things. But you can see that it fits the, you know, it fits the story, it fits the text, that it's, it's all about Enki assigning these things to the different deities, assigning the world a certain order to be in. And it's a very important text, honestly, in the broad Near East, uh, and particularly when we come to the biblical text. It's, it's important to keep these types of creation, assigning order motifs in mind, uh, because they bear on uh, what these ancient Near Eastern texts are doing.